In this lesson, we're going to be looking at religions. We're still on the regional patterns type of idea, but it's the religion subsection of that curriculum. Now, again, this is a mini lesson on religions. It's not going to be your whole source of information. Use what we talk about in class to go into addition to this. All right. Now, in regards to religions, there's a few things that we need to talk about before we actually get into the different religions that we're going to discuss. First is the difference between universalizing and ethnic religions. Universalizing religions are the religions that are attempting to be global and are attempting to appeal to all people wherever they are. So you're going to see them all over the place. And that's what my first list of religions are going to be. The last is ethnic religions. These ethnic religions are appealing primarily to only one group of people or one ethnicity. And then you're generally going to see that in one place of where they are living. Now, the next thing that I want to uh, differentiate between is atheistic and agnostic. And these are people that do not have a religion. Atheists believe that there is no God, that God does not exist. And agnostics believe that nothing can be known about God, whether he exists or not. So no God, and then we're not real sure. Next is the differentiation between a branch of religion and a denomination of religion. A branch of a religion um, is going to be dealing with a, an actual fundamental decision uh, or, or change in that religion. And then your denomination is going to be a change in that branch from that religion. So that's kind of the, the subset that I want you to remember. You've got the actual religion, then you've got branches, and then you have denominations out of each one of those branches. Uh, and then I've got a couple of key terms here that I want us to look at. I want you to look at prescription, which is talking about roles that are in regards to those religions. And then secularism is the idea that Fundamentally, we're becoming less and less religious and more and more to the fact that we don't really have a religion. Um, and that's a term that you need to look at. The opposite of secularism would be sacred. Uh, that's, that's the difference. Religions are going to be sacred. And then your maps that you see on your screen now. Your maps, they're going to be the ones that show you where these, nation, these religions actually are. And it's important that you understand those. And then also, also this pie chart. This pie chart shows you the breakdown of these religions and the percentages of them where they're found. And your three major monotheistic religions, you can see on this map, uh, those are Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Monotheistic meaning one God. Now, right along, the first major religion that we're talking about is Christianity. There's more than 2 billion Christians in the world. Now, these figures, these statistics can often be controversial, and we're not 100% sure on these stats because places like the United States don't keep stats on how many people are actually Christian. Uh, in Europe, predominantly you're going to have Roman Catholic uh, types of, of Christianity in Europe. In the Western sphere, like where we are, you're 90% Christian, and then... Uh, 10, or you're not, the Western Hemisphere is 90% Christian. And in Latin America, 93% of that is Catholic. And in the United States, 40% of Christianity is Catholic, Roman Catholicism. So you can see the breakdown there. And then some of your denominations that we'll, I want you to look at uh, are from your map that you see here of the United States. You've got Baptists in the South, Methodists just above that. You've got your Lutheran above that as well. Your Mormons in the West. And then uh, your Amish are actually in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana. And what I want you to remember about Christianity is that it is a proletism type of religion. And what that means is it's trying to convert the people into their religion. Now, the denomination here that we're looking at, the Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints, this is Mormonism. Uh, and you can find this clustered in Utah and the surrounding states. And 3% of Americans today are Mormons. All right, your next major religion that we're looking at that is universalized uh, is Islam. <clears throat> Islam, there's 1.5 billion people in it located in the world. The word Islam means submission to the will of God, and they refer to God as Allah. That is their name for God. It's mainly located in the Middle East, but there's a, there's a lot of them in Indonesia. There's a lot of Muslims in Pakistan and Bangladesh and India, and there's also a lot of uh, movement of Islam into the United States and in other parts of Europe, and the numbers and populations of Islam in these two countries are actually rising. Now, there's different branches of Islam. One of those branches is the Sunni branch. 80% of Muslim are in the Sunni branch, and this is talking about the uh, branch of Islam, uh, the denomination of Islam that comes off and says that uh, the direct descendants of Muhammad should be the ones that run the religion. <clears throat> The word Sunni actually means people following the example of Muhammad. That's what it means. 80% are here. 
the Shia, it's also referred to as the Shia in the United States, they're the more sectarian that it's called. Iran has the largest population of Shia uh, Muslims in the world. There's also, I didn't write them down, but there's also Sufism and Quranism, which are also denominations of Islam uh, that we kind of break off and have. In Islam, you've got to remember that there's five pillars. One of those is fasting. One of those is giving of the alms. The other one is praying five times a day facing Mecca. Uh, the fourth is taking a, uh, a leave, taking a pilgrimage to Mecca that is called the Hajj. Uh, and then there is Profession of faith, that's the other one. Professing that Muhammad is the only prophet uh, of Allah. That's the five pillars that you must follow uh, within this faith. And again, one of those is taking a pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, and within Mecca, you have the Kaaba, which is a stone that Angel Gabriel supposedly came down on and gave the message to Muhammad, who was their prophet, uh, for them to worship Allah, one God. So they are monotheistic. Now, there's two key things that I want you to get from Islam. One is the Sharia law. This is the actual law and commandments that's brought forth out of the religion that the adherents must follow. It's the framework that society is organized in. And then the jihad is the sacred struggle. This is the idea that you must defend your faith within Islam. This is where your radical fundamentalists of Islam really take over and say that it needs to be a militant defense of the faith. Buddhism is our third major universalized uh, religion, and it's the first one that we're talking about that's actually polytheistic, where they have more than one god. Because both Christianity and Islam is monotheistic. Uh, but they are polytheistic, they have many gods, they believe in reincarnation, which is the idea that when you die, you'll come back as something else, depending on how you were as a person. They also believe in what's called nirvana, which is not a rock band in Buddhism. It is an idea that you, you can finally get out of this endless cycle of rebirth, of reincarnation, and get to the state of eternal peace. That's the idea behind Muhammad. But there's three different branches of Buddhism. The first is Mayahana. Uh, this is where 56% 50, of Buddhists are located. <coughs> Excuse me. That's in China, Japan, and the Koreas. The other one is Theravada, which is where about 38% of your Buddhists are located. And this is located around Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, uh, Sri Lanka, as well as Thailand. And then the Vajrayana. I know I'll probably butcher those big time, but that's where 6% of your Buddhists are located. Uh, they're located in areas like Tibet and Mongolia. They're also known as Lamaists and Tantrayanists, uh, but those are also denominations. Uh, the religious functions of Buddhism are performed by the monks. They're not performed by the general public. Um, so you, they're not really considered religious peoples because of this. The next two uh, universalized religions that we're looking at is Sikhism. The Sikhs are located mainly in northern India and in a region referred to as Punjab. Uh, this is in between Islam and Hinduism in India. And so you kind of see some similarities there between the two because they're monotheistic from Islam and then they are re the idea of reincarnation from Hinduism. They take those two and combine them. Then you also have the Baha'i religion. This is mainly found in Africa and Asia. This is a very young religion. About 1844 it was established. And there were disciples of God, uh, and these, one of these disciples was actually the prophet. Now, the other religions that we're going to talk about today are your ethnic religions, meaning it's from an ethnicity. It's from a people. It's in one common location, and it's not spreading worldwide, and you can't find it in many other places. The first and most predominant one is Hinduism. There's 900 million adherents of the faith in Hinduism, and 90% of those are located in India, and the other 10% are located right around it, uh, like in Nepal and Bangladesh. So it's in that area. That's where they're located. They have thousands of gods. They're very polytheistic. Uh, their sacred place is the Ganges River, uh, this river that they feel purifies everything in it. So it's highly polluted, but they feel it purifies everything that's in it. A lot of their rituals take place in the Ganges River. And they believe in reincarnation like Buddhism, but their reincarnation is through the caste system, which is a social class of people that you can move up and down in depending on how well you were in this life, and then you can die and come back as something better. They, Nirvana is not part of Hinduism. It is part of Buddhism. Some other Asian ethnic religions, one is Confucianism. Confucianism is kind of following the ancient Chinese traditions. Uh, Confucius is not a god, but he has these morals that you're supposed to follow. Uh, you might have seen some of his quotes. Another one is Taoism. Taoism is also talking about the way or the path. You might have seen the yin-yang before, and I've tried to draw one, but I've butchered it pretty bad. You probably know by now I'm not a very good artist. 
Uh, Taoism is a syncretic faith, which means that it has a fusion of a lot of the concepts that it has around it. The next type of ethnic religion that we're looking at is your primal indigenous. The first is pagan, and what that's referring to is the old ancient types of spiritual worship. Um, this is like your ancient Greeks, your ancient Romans. This is the types of religion that they had. So when you hear pagan religions, that's the practices of the, these ancient types of religions. The next is kind of more of a modern one. It's called Juchte. Juchte is the North Korean ideology that the government is putting forth. And it's the idea that not, not that the government is God, but that's almost how they're treated. Kim Jong-un right now in North Korea is pretty much treated as if he's God. But it's this ideology that the North Korean government puts forth. Um, it's widely regarded as what they worship. Uh, the next is your African tribal religions. Animism is the one that we're looking at here. It's the idea that animals and nature has spirits and you should treat it respectively. Very similar to the Native Americans, but your tribal regions of Africa, that's the religion that they have. The Ayers Rock is their sacred place. You should go check it out, look up a picture of it, but that's referred to as the sacred place of animism. If you didn't know that, you can see where it talks about rock and, I, and identify that it's nature and spirits. And the, see the connection there. The next that I see is spiritism. What spiritism is, is it's the idea that people have spirits. And when they die, those spirits remain on earth. In Brazil, this idea of spiritism is talking about how psychics and mediums can contact these spirits here on earth. In Japan, there's what's known as Shintoism. And this type of religion is of spiritism, but it's an ancestral worship. It's the idea that ancestors follow the families around and look out for them and make sure things are going right and that they're acting right. That sort of thing. And last but not least, your last ethnic religion that we're looking at, and probably your most, one of the most widely worshipped, is Judaism. Judaism, there's 14 million followers of Judaism, and two-fifths of those followers are in the United States. Now, Judaism is a monotheistic religion that believes in an all-powerful and invisible God, that this God has not sent his Messiah yet. That's the difference between Christianity, the big one. Its holy work is, uh, is the Old Testament of the, of the Bible, of what we refer to. There's no New Testament because for them the Messiah has not come yet. Uh, the beginnings of Christianity and Islam are found here. That's why I've put it's the hearth of Christianity and Islam because Christianity and Islam take some of the same players like Abraham uh, and, and use them for their religions as well because this is kind of the beginning of them. So that's why I call it the hearth of it. Zionism is a term that's referring to that these Jews, that the Jews in Judaism belong in Palestine and Jerusalem and in this area. And so Zionism is the idea that they should be located in Palestine and in this area. And so if you're a Zionist, that means you support the idea that the Jews should be located in this region and not the Muslims, uh, which is a huge uh, conflict area right now and ha always has been. But this whole, this religion begins around the Fertile Crescent and in this area around the Jordan River. And it moves and spreads to the Nile and to some of these others. But then these religions break off. I don't want to say break off of it, but they hold some of the same key figures and players uh, that Judaism has.